Hello there. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, there's no answer. Sorry, what's oh, your name? Sorry, we're asleep. Are you Gemma? Yeah, I am. Uh, okay, Gemma. Yeah. Just put your hand on a second. Sure, sure. Come on, come on a second. Sorry, could I... Gemma, do you want to come out? Yeah, sure, sure. Come on, right. just want to see them. Hand to your hands. All right, Gemma, at this moment, I'm resting on suspicion of murder. OK, you don't have to say anything, but you may have a defence. Do you want to mention one question? Something which you later rely on court. Anything you do say, may be given evidence, OK? Once you're in the cuffs... Am I allowed to... I'll go explain everything to you. Okay? Should I get some yeah, shoes sorry. What? If you want to one sec... Who's inside at the moment? Um, mother. Your mother? Yeah. Who okay. it? If you want to... Oh, because someone left that up. Yeah. Let's step back inside. Is anyone else inside? Just your mum? Yeah. There is someone else inside, no, no, not just your mum? just my mum, yeah. Alright, do you want to... Should I bring her or...? Bring her in. Bring her in? For a minute, well, yeah. We're just going to come in for a sec, yeah, okay? Sure, sure. And they've said that the person driving the Volvo, waited in the car all that time with the windows down and the front door open, the passenger door open when it was literally chucking it down with rain and it was windy. Why is that, Gemma? No comment. The car stank, didn't it, Gemma? No comment. Stunk of a dead person. No comment. Stunk of Deborah's decomposing body. Is that right, Gemma? No comment. Is that emergency? Um, hi, I just found a body. Oh, go ahead, caller, what's your emergency? Um, I just found a body. Right, OK, a, a body, is it... Are they breathing? No, they're dead. They look like they've um, possibly been there like a few days or something. It's the right and stuff. Right, okay. Bear me a second. Let's pop this on. What's the road? Yeah, what road are you on? Um, I'm in Salcom. You're in Salcom, um, sorry. Let, let me have a look. I can populate, hopefully, where you are. So, um, Bennett Road, are you quite near the harbour? Um, we're up from North Sand Beach. Um, hang on, we'll just look at Google Maps. Oh, OK, yeah, so I can see North Sands Bay. Bennett Road. Bennett Road, yeah, you are on Bennett Road. That, no doubt, stood you in good stead when you cut off Deborah's head. Although why you chose to do that remains a mystery. Following your arrest on the 6th of July, amongst the items found by the police at your home was a will which purported to be that of Deborah and to leave 95% of her assets to you and the remaining 5% to your mother. That will was fake. It was written by you and it contained signatures of Deborah and two witnesses, each of which had been forged by you. 
one of the persons whose signatures you forged was that of a man by the name of Virgil Gale Gita, an erstwhile neighbour of yours who had died some months earlier. Following his death, you had managed to gain access to his room and you took from that room various papers of his, including his passport, as well as his mobile phone. A short time later, you rang the phone company, pretending to be him, giving his name and date of birth, and you had the phone reactivated. It was his phone, rather than yours, that you used to book the hire car, and it was his phone that you took with you on the trip to Devon, leaving your own at home. Moreover, the evidence of the handwriting expert was that his purported signature on the will had been copied from his passport, which you had removed from his room. Quite apart from anything else, I am driven to the conclusion that you are extremely devious. I said at the outset of these remarks that I would return to the issue of mitigating and aggravating features. The sole mitigation is that you are effectively a woman of previous good character. Although given the gravity of your crime, in my judgment, that entitles you to only a very modest discount. As to aggravating features, there are the following. <coughs> Firstly, the amount of planning and premeditation that went into this offence, although it is right to acknowledge that this is bound to be an invariable feature of a killing done for gain, and I must avoid double counting in that regard. Secondly, there is the issue of Deborah's mental and physical vulnerability, to which I have already referred, and of which you were very well aware. Thirdly, there is the chilling aspect of what you did to and with her body after you had killed her. You have shown absolutely no remorse, and it appears that you are in complete denial as to what you did, notwithstanding what, in my judgment, amounted to overwhelming evidence against you. The enormity of your crime is profoundly shocking, even more so given your apparent religious devotion, as well as the fact that Deborah Chong was a good friend to you and had shown you great kindness. The sentence of the court is one of life imprisonment, and the minimum term of imprisonment that you will in any event be required to serve will be 34 years, there will be deducted from that term the 475 days that you have spent in custody on remand, and the statutory surcharge will apply. Would you please take the defendant downstairs?